let's put a cool background of like those angels on the top or something so people don't literally feel like it got bought by BlackRock. I hope that the missionaries doing these tours are going to lean into this a little bit and get deeply into the spiritual I have side a solution. It. I have a solution. When you go to Kirtland, your family should do a tryout. This is going to be the best day ever. This is going to be the best day ever. Wake up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinalis. Today, I'm joined in the studio by Connor Boyack, as well as via Zoom by none other than the associate professor of all things apocryphal, Jonah Barnes, who's here to talk to us about the first tours they're making of the Kirtland Temple. It is official, ladies and gentlemen. The Kirtland Temple is open for business, and we're going to see what it's like on the inside and provide our little commentary here. Uh, before we go any further, Jonah, tell us what's going on, my man. The Kirtland Temple, boys and girls, is officially open for business. Open for business, the church, which just got the Kirtland Temple in a uh, over a game of uh, Mormon poker I got- or Trump. <laughs> uh, it's called. They managed to win the thing. We're there, there. You know, it's Rasband. He's. He's he sleeps on the poker table. He's, it's, he's it's better the, than you think. It's the game of Monopoly, isn't it? Like they had to mortgage it, so they flipped their card over, and then finally they had to give it to us. They went bankrupt. <laughs> oh, that's dude, totally, that's, that's a way better joke. Savage, it's exactly man. true. <laughs> savage. Okay, keep going. By the way, we should make a Ward Radio Monopoly game. Because you know how you can like pay a licensing fee to Monopoly and make your own version of Monopoly? I have BYUopoly, yeah. You have BYUopoly? Uh-huh. Okay. We should totally make uh, like a Mormon Monopoly and have like Park Place be the Kirtland Temple. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, the true, the true Park Place, do you know what it would be? The Temple Lot. The Temple Lot. Oh, snap. yeah, yeah. Yep. We would have 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 to have it be the temple lot. But Kirtland, that would be what's below Park Place. What's the next most valuable boardwalk? One? I think. Isn't uh, it the no, boardwalk? I think boardwalk is the most expensive, oh, okay. right? It might be. And I think Park Place. Yes. So the Park Place would be the Kirtland Temple, but the boardwalk that would be that would be uh, the temple lot. Okay. So anyway, tell us what's going on, my man, Jonah. So so yeah. So the church uh, it, to. Bring people back up to speed. The community of Christ was falling on hard times, and the Church of Jesus Christ said, "Why don't they take some of them, uh, take some of them artifacts and properties off your hands and help you out?" So, we now have access. Uh, we now own the Kirtland Temple, which was the first temple built in the last days in this modern dispensation. Uh, but the church is not going to make it back into a functioning temple because LDS churches actually provide a lot of function. They're actually working buildings. They're not just pretty. Um, but the church has decided to keep the Kirtland Temple open to the public for tours. And the first such tour went through just this past uh, just this past weekend. And they had, uh, I think, 200 people from America, Australia, Ghana, um, and different places who came on the first tour of the Kirtland Temple since it changed uh, ownership's hands. There's a, there's a lot of great testimonies from people who went through talking about what they felt there. If people aren't sure... People aren't remembering the Kirtland Temple had some great, great stuff go down in the Kirtland Temple. Well, they had angels on the roof. They had the Lord appearing inside the temple. They had Wait, Elijah angels on back. the roof. There was angels, angels on, the on the roof. There were, there, there were uh, people out in the streets who later reported in their journals and diaries that they saw uh, or what they thought was, you know, angels on the roof, fire and, you know, glowing and everything. So this was kind of a, a, a outsider's perspective on what was going on in and I guess on the building as well. Dude, that the, is, cur- okay, cool, the, rock on. <laughs> the Curlin Temple dedication where they sang the greatest hymn ever, which is hymn number two, Spirit of God, was written yeah. for that dedication. Yep. And it it is our modern day Pentecost. So you read about Pentecost in the first few chapters of Acts, that happened at the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. Angels singing, angelic choirs, the Lord himself appeared, transfigured. It was amazing. So that is the building that we now have back again uh, in the ownership of the Lord's kingdom. So 
Um, so yeah, so they went through their their little tour of it. The church does a great job of this, by the way. Nobody does a better job than the church at this stuff, at, at preserving these historical sites and making them accessible to people. They're going to have little sister missionaries padding around giving people tours. It's going to be awesome. Well, I was going to say there's definitely already signs of, okay, I, I do believe that the church does a really good job of what some cynical people like my boy, John Hyacek says, like, you know, fertilizing and mowing and, you know, he's... <laughs> He's kind of a little bit salty after I've seen some of these posts of his, you know what I'm saying? I could tell he's a little bit cynical towards the restoration efforts of the church. However, um, after having been a BYU student myself and seeing how impeccable those grounds were and having been to a lot of these church history sites, I do know that they 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 put place a high priority and a high budget, shall we say, into the beauty of the grounds and so on and so forth, right? Um, now, what's funny is... They don't quite go totally predictably corporate Memphis like corporate America does, but there is a little bit of a corporateness to it. And as soon as I saw this sign here, I thought like, oh, yeah, church owned. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that that's is, to tell. <laughs> that is such a church sign. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that is just like, they literally took, that is the stationery from the BYU Museum of Art converted <laughs> into a sign. The question is how many people were involved in the creation of that sign. Yes, right? yeah, a exactly. committee of designers and all the Curtin McConkey lawyers and yeah, everything. It's like, <laughs> so I don't want to say that John Hayacek is right. All right. I'm not saying he's right. But I I I'm, 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 I think he goes, I, I think he's a little too cynical for my taste, right? But when I see that sign and I think, oh, yep. <laughs> The Brighamites, as they call us in quotes. Yep, we've showed up. We definitely bought this thing. We corporatized I, it. Yeah, I can, it's like, oh, come on, man. Let's let's do a little bit. Like, let's put a cool background of like those angels on the top or something so people don't literally feel like it got bought by BlackRock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so like, anyway. Bur- 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 Berkshire Hathaway. Black. Yeah, it's, it's like, a, like a real estate <laughs> sign. You know what I'm saying? Let me, I, I want to get your guys' take on this. So uh, Jonah, okay. Jonah mentioned the sister missionary aspect that we're going to have the sister missionaries there giving their little spiel and and baseline i think we have a massive upgrade because one of the problems that we've had when the community of christ was giving the tours of the temple was that oftentimes and and quite often from what i understand the majority of the time they would focus on architecture right they would talk about oh look at these windows and this door and this wood was made from this you know and so a lot of the tour guys would focus on these superficial non-spiritual aspects where you can find online an abundance of testimonials of, of people's own experiences saying that they would L- LDS people would ask the community of Christ uh, uh you know tour guide oh where where did you know Christ come like i want to see that and they would almost yep. with a shrug be like oh yeah okay that's up there uh, so, so clearly it's an upgrade for members of the church to have an experience where faithful missionaries who are aligned on the doctrine and so forth are going to be doing it. One concern I do have, so here's a quote from Matthew Grow, managing director of the LDS Church's History Department. He said that guides at all of the church's sites in Curtin and Nauvoo will continue to be senior missionary couples and young women, sister missionaries, but they will follow scripts written by historians. So in my experience, when you get some of these tour guides, I, I think they do... No religion allowed! I, no, it's it's that they, no. they have this kind of scripted, formulaic thing. It's, it's like a public school class where you have gifted kids in there, and you got the kids who are falling behind. The teacher has to teach to the middle. I think what happens is the Missionaries, you know, generally stick to these scripts, even though you might have members of the church there who are already up to speed on the basics and they might want to dig into some of the meat, but they're they're force fed milk with everybody else on the tour. So I don't think that's a universal thing. I think you do have some missionaries who are more well versed in the history who can answer questions. I just hope that here's this huge opportunity for the church to take possession of this property and all that that entails. I hope that the missionaries doing these tours are going to lean into this a little bit and get deeply into the spiritual I have side a solution. I have a solution. Do in we we we've covered this in March Madness already. Already, how do you do college sports? How do we do NCAA sports? You divide them into brackets. So I think when you go to Kirtland, your family should do a tryout. There should be missionaries there that just start giving you trivia. Like, okay, the church was founded in what year? Okay, First Nephi comes before what book in the Book of Mormon? Who is Enos and how long did he pray? And if your kid is knocking it out of the park because he reads Connor Boyack's Tuttle Twin books, you know, and if he's knocking out of the park because he's homeschooled just like uh, Tikla 
Jonah Barnes's friend out there, you know, if these kids are just knocking out of the park, it's like, okay, you get the Division One right. missionary. <laughs> yeah, you we're gonna the- take you upstairs, right. show you the advanced tour, dude. Yeah. You're freaking. You're going to the Holy of Holies, practically getting your second <laughs> anointing done right now, right here. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know, if you're like just one of the lazy learners, you know. If 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 you smell like incense and coffee and you're a progmo, you know what I'm saying or whatever, then we're just like okay, you get the D three class, Kirtland one hundred and one. Right? You know, just, yeah, Kirtland one hundred and one. You, you get the basics, and uh, it's the very neutered speech that can't be recorded and then put on ex Mormon subreddit. You know yeah, what I'm if saying? you if you think if you think Joseph Smith practiced polygamy. Then you're like you're low tier. Yeah, you're low tier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Struggle. You got to hang out with Connor Boyax, you know, re- rejects. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but, uh, yeah, but we got to divide them into divisions and then accommodate the missionaries accordingly, and then um, tattoo you based on your division to shame you at church when you come back. No, I'm just Great idea. I'm like, Great idea. We're going all in. Well, there's a there's a couple pictures in the Discord here. I have I have another. Uh, suggestion here because i know that all the brethren watch this show and they're watching uh-huh. this right now heaven help with them raptured attention i know that. yeah <laughs> um <laughs> but uh there's a couple pictures in the discord of what we should absolutely do to kirtland now that we have possession of it uh you can see there's a little picture of the building on top of that's mount tabor the mount of transfiguration okay kirtland is the modern mount of transfiguration i say we build this huge uh, Roman Byzantine complex on top with a gymnasium and all of that, several stories high with the floating buttresses. We also have the uh, mosaic. Uh, we, we can get little deacons to, to put each one of the little tiles together. On like the in this cupola that we've got right here, this big yeah, round. Absolutely. <laughs> I think this is definitely what needs to happen uh, in, in Kirtland to make this. And I think Hyasek would, would appreciate this. I think this would be more. What, what's funny is now this is what they're actually doing. There's the tour guide that you talked about. Is this guy, <laughs> Connor, do you think this is the D1 or the D2 or the D3 tour guide? Oh, the, the, this is day one. You're not going to go off script on, on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you you got you got to you know give it till like after the 3rd year when people get like a little let loose a little bit and have some fun with they it. They let their hair down so they can talk about the restoration <laughs> of the priesthood, right? You know what I'm saying? All Let's right. get into the mysteries of the gospel, shall we? <laughs> okay, that's cool. This guy looks about as milk toast 100% <laughs> correlated I do what the brethren say out there and frankly that's probably why he got the job <laughs> yep. and was picked first because the church is like we are not botching the first one year of this yeah which by the way um i do not at all mock them for you know what i'm saying oh, it makes like, sense oh yeah it makes yeah. it makes total sense just to be like we are straight as a razor right down well, the middle also the whole first year also keep in mind i mean what jonah's saying that they're not going to turn this into a functional church that is true however there's an asterisk on that where it's only guaranteed for the first 15 years and so, oh, I, really? I didn't read into that. Okay. Part, part of the agreement, and if you read the joint agreement with the Community of Christ and their FAQ on their website, they say that as part of the negotiations, they secured a 15-year agreement where, uh, you know, it wouldn't be turned, it wouldn't be closed down, it would be open to everybody, you know, people of other faiths, and good. and that the Community of Christ and other uh, groups could still use the property for some of their traditional meetings and ceremonies and and events and things like they do. Um, and so, uh, but 15 years is the only guarantee after that, you know, presumably the church is going to continue doing what they're doing now, but there's no promises that they wouldn't turn this into a dude. Next time you got to cash out some artifacts, church of Christ, get me on it. I would have gotten you 25 years. (laughs) I would have gotten you 25 years. (laughs) Hey, that means 15 years to get your food storage people and buy your properties and independence. 15 years. The clock's ticking. Boom. Shabalaka. Okay. So, um, anything else that we want to cover here? This is great. I mean, uh, we're super stoked that the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints now owns the Kirtland temple. We talked about that last week week uh we think the sign it's a little bit berkshire hathaway i think we got to work on the signage a little <laughs> bit totally we'll be honest um but the uh the tours look like they're fun you know they're fun when the ladies start smiling and whipping out their <laughs> cell phones when the relief society starts wanting to take pictures so it goes up on that ugly cork board in that weird hall in the church <laughs> that, no that, nobody looks actually, that nobody looks <laughs> nobody at nobody looks at that thing. that's when you know it's going off in the relief society man yeah so, so one other thing to add in addition to the the update with the temple is that in salt lake 
uh, in the the light one of the libraries or museums that they have there. Uh, they're now showing, you know, the jail door from Liberty Jail. Uh, they've got some documents, some letters. They've got uh, the painting of Joseph and Emma. And so kind of timed with the same you know, release of the Kirtland Temple, it seems that they've now made these available to the public uh, for viewing as well. All right. Rock on. Yeah, yeah. I saw um, and, I saw a lot of posts on that. The last thing the last thing that I'll say is that. So my ancestors and some of my ancestors were around then and they were in Kirtland and they were in Nauvoo when these things were happening. And the Lord so blithely left Nauvoo. When we were being persecuted, we left Nauvoo and set it on the plains with no temple. We left all our, our buildings, all the things that we had built yeah. for the mountains because we would rather have the Lord with us in the dead of the wilderness than have the most beautiful historical building in the world made from breaking China into dust so that, it glit so that the paint glittered we would rather have the Lord with us dying in the wilderness than be comfortable in a gorgeous building in the East. And so I love the Kirtland Temple. It's wonderful. In the end, it is a building with a function, and the function was to restore the priesthood keys and to uh, to reign in the last dispensation. That's what it did. So whatever happens to it is great, but the real point is we have the priesthood keys. So thank you, Kirtland Temple, and we'll try to do you good by getting some exciting tours. Yeah, dude, rock on. And we got to go there. Like, that's going to be a field trip, bro. Uh, let should. us know in the comments below if you want to make a cool field trip out of that. Um, then, uh, you know, it could be like, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll go watch the solar eclipse. Maybe we'll go watch the solar eclipse happen from the Kirtland Temple. I don't know. I got to see if it actually flies over the right spot or not. You know what I'm saying? But God will make it happen. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let us know what you guys think uh, in the comments below. If that would be a super fun, cool trip. If you want to see us do a field trip to the super milk toast Berkshire Hathaway <laughs> studded, you know, um, uh, tour of the Kirtland Temple uh, or not. And if there's other uh, better places to check out. But let's keep the conversation going in the comments below. Um, please make sure you check us out on our website. Sign up for the Discord there. Also, we're going to be... Um putting out uh, pushing out some cool news articles and some commentary and some opinion pretty soon so you're going to want to sign up for that by signing up for the newsletter as well at wardradio.com and for this and more please check us out as always at wardradio.com this is going to be the best day ever this is going to be the best day ever wake up Talk of the morning, the bacon is crispy, the coffee is pouring. My meditation is peeling an orange, the bank says I'm already scoring.